welcome viewers to the 15th lecture in the open online course computer numerical control of machine tools and processes so we will be discussing about programming interpolation computer aided offline programming etc first let's have an one mcq one of the main functions of the cnc interpolator is to maintain programmed ratios between access speeds that means maintain whatever ratio between vx vy and vz has been programmed to maintain that b start the spindle rotation interpolate between two spindle speeds none of the others here the correct answer is maintain program ratios between axis speeds why the two main uh, two functions of cnc interpolator is one to maintain program ratios between axis speeds and to maintain the programmed absolute speed value feed value along the cutter path so along the cutter path we have to maintain a particular feed feed rate and along the different axis like x y z we have to maintain the correct ratio of these axis feed values that uh, that ensures that the correct profile or contour will be cut in cnc we are having no part specific uh, jigs or uh, templates or cams etc but all the cutter uh, paths which are to be uh, executed they are executed by maintaining correct ratio between access speeds or programmed ratio between access speeds so a is the correct answer a prospective customer of a cnc point to point table wants x axis basic length unit to be halved and x axis table speed to be doubled so this is you know quite expected you would like basic length unit to be less and speeds to be higher the x axis employs pulse generator stepper motor which is having 200 steps to carry out one revolution and one step per pulse gearbox with ratio half and lead screw with a pitch of 4 mm i have not included a drawing because we have done so many of these problems till now you would be easily able to grasp what we are talking about so four possible solutions are given in order to get half the basic length unit and double the table speed simply add a dda with n equal to 2 and x equal to 2 in between pulse generator and motor so that the motor is now going to get pulses at a different rate this is definitely not the answer because when speed has to be doubled we if we include a dda in between pulse generator and motor speed will only be reduced because the dda <coughs> cannot develop any pulse rate equal to the input pulse rate it always has to be less so this definitely cannot be the answer because table speed will definitely become lower remove the gearbox what if we remove the gearbox okay speed will be doubled because the ratio of the gearbox was half and since this is removed speed won't be halved but it will be you know double of the previous value but this will definitely affect the basic length unit which will become double as well so removing the gearbox will definitely not solve the problem because basic length unit is going to become higher so we are not even doing the calculation though i have included one calculation page quadruple pulse generative frequency that means make the pulse generative frequency four times and add a dda with n equal to 2 and x equal to 2 
okay this has a possibility we will you know we will check this because pulse generative frequency once it is getting in increased there is a fair chance that we might be getting uh, double the speed and none of the others. So, let us see the answers. I have included the calculations for the first two cases, but I also include this particular you know uh, I, I would like to remind you once again that these two can definitely not give us the answers for the reasons that we discussed just now. First of all, what was the previous case? If you do the calculations okay, with uh, you know gearbox half and uh, lead screw 4 uh, and stepper motor 200 pulses per revolution etcetera, you will come up with basic length unit equal to 10 millimeters and previous velocity equal to 0 0.01 of the input frequency. Okay. So, the requirement therefore, would be half the basic length unit which means 5 microns and the velocity to be 0 0.02 of the input frequency that means double of the previous one 0 0.01. So, this is our requirement if this is the requirement we can carry out you know calculations for the basic length unit and the x axis table speed these calculations can be carried out. I, I have I have included them you can refer to them, but we are definitely not going to discuss them because as we have uh, you know discussed previously speed can never be doubled by this process. So, we need not even consider it. In the second case uh, we are having calculation of basic length unit to be incorrect that means, it does not fulfill the condition that it is half the uh, previous basic length unit. Why? As we discussed if you remove a gearbox which was doing a reduction in the speed it was also reducing the basic length unit and if you remove it obviously, you are not going to get uh, half the basic length unit. So, it must be incorrect. So, I am not even going through the calculations though I have included it you can refer to it if you are interested. So, third case I have included a calculation what is that starting with the frequency of 4 times previous frequency we pass through the DDA with the you know uh, with the formula f into x by 2 to the power n here the frequency is 4 f here uh, x is equal to 2 as mentioned in the uh, problem here n is equal to 2. So, 2 to the power 2 multiplied by you know uh, the least count of the uh, I mean divided by the number of steps per revolution of the motor. So, that this one multiplied by this one the first three terms when multiplied together will give us the stepper motor number of rotations per unit time. So, after this if we multiply the gearbox ratio because the gearbox is still there. So, this is input frequency this is DDA this is stepper motor rotation this is gearbox multiplication and this is the lead screw pitch per number of input frequency uh, input pulses. So, that is why we divide it by 4 f and we get equal to 1 by 200 equal to 0 0.005 that means 5 microns this is correct that is what we wanted and the table speed must be equal to number of basic length units multiplied by the number of pulses simple and that means that we are going to get 0 0.02 into f which is also correct. So, the third combination will give us the correct you know correct values of basic length unit and uh, what you call it table speed. So, option number C is correct. Next question says a stepper motor of 200 steps per revolution okay, was connected via a 1 fourth ratio gearbox to a lead screw of 5 millimeters pitch. The basic length unit is we have to find out the basic length unit. Once again this is this uh, calculation is obvious we will have 1 by 200 multiplied by 1 fourth which means 1 by 800 multiplied by the uh, lead screw pitch which is 5. So, 5 divided by 800 will give us 6.25 microns let us see yeah 1 by 200 multiplied by 1 fourth multiplied by 5 is equal to 0 0.00625 millimeters which means 6.25 microns ok that is good. So, after that let us see the second MCQ. 
The second MCQ says the steps are counted down in a position down counter. This is the figure in which the position down counter is shown okay. and uh, it is desired by a customer that each bit of this counter represent 10 microns. At present each uh, bit will be representing 6.25 microns. But the customer says I want this to be 10 microns. This can be done by, so uh, uh, a solution is being provided. This can be done by attaching a DDA as shown with n equal to 8 and x equal to 5. If you remember n is the number of bits inside the counters present here and x is the content of that counter which is getting again uh, added to itself again and again. Okay, I mean added to the result of previous additions. So, if we uh, uh, recall that you know uh, 6.25 microns are getting uh, you know uh, the table is getting moved by 6.25 microns per pulse. So, that means if I ha want to have 10 here and if I want to have 6.25 here let us find out the LCM uh, which means that uh, 50. 50 uh, 6.25 multiplied by 8 is equal to 5 into 10. So, by the time you send 8 pulses to the stepper motor, if you can send 5 pulses to the uh, position down counter, everything will be balanced. That means, 8 basic length units will be equivalent to 10 uh, bit uh, representation here, uh, sorry 5 bits representing 10 microns each, 50 microns here, 50 microns here. So, by the time we send 8 pulses here, we should send 5 pulses to the position down counter, which means that if x is equal to 5 and n is equal to 3, therefore, this particular uh, you know pulse rate coming out here will be input pulse rate multiplied by 5 divided by 2 to the power 3 that means 8, 5 by 8 and that will uh, you know satisfy all conditions. So, I have written down the uh, answer here just like we discussed. If you send 5 pulses to the position down counter, it will show decrements of sorry, sorry this should be 5 uh, ok, it will show decrements of 5 bits that is correct. Hence, these bits would represent 50 microns. So, 1 bit should represent 10 microns what we have sent is what we have initially uh, stated is that by the time 8 pulses are sent to the motor to give you know 50 microns or 0 0.05 millimeters if we can send 5 pulses to the position down counter at the same time it will serve our purpose so use a dda with n is equal to 3 and x equal to 5 so that its uh, output pulse frequency will be input pulse frequency multiplied by 5 by 8 so, the correct answer is let us see the previous correct answer would be number c n is equal to 3 x equal to 5. The feed in millimeters per minute along x axis corresponding to the program line g 91, g 00, g 01, x 40, y 30, x uh, f 50 is 40, 50, 30, none of the others. So, first of all what we notice is that uh, linear interpolation is taking place that means straight line motion with a particular feed rate and g 91 means that incremental motion is being carried out. Incremental motion means 40 along x that means 40 millimeters of movement is taking place along x, 30 millimeters of movement is taking along y taking place along y. So, we understand that the, the velocities along x and y will also be in this ratio because in linear movement that means in straight line movement the velocity triangle is similar to the displacement triangle. So, movement along x and y will be 4 is to 3, 
and therefore feed velocity which is 50 along the main uh, path it will be in the ratio of 40 millimeters per minute along x and 30 millimeters per minute along y. So, that 40 square plus 30 square will give us uh, 50 square because we know that 4 square plus 3 square 16 plus 9 is equal to 5 square. So, 40 square plus 30 square is equal to 50 square. So, 40 millimeters along x axis is the answer that means A is the correct answer. If drilling is done on a CNC machine with contouring control system. So, we have a machine with contouring or continuous control system say machining center, milling machine. Okay. In these machines suppose you are carrying out drilling then first option reads the cutter diameter compensation left should be used the cutter diameter compensation right should be used. Drilling cannot be done on CNC machine with contouring control system. Cutter diameter compensation is not required and none of the others. The first two, <coughs> first two options cutter diameter compensation left or right they are not re relevant to this discussion because in point to point operation like drilling cutter diameter compensation does not come into the picture it is not required. Drilling cannot be done on CNC machines with contouring control system this is also not correct because uh, a machine which can uh, carry out or which has contouring control or continuous control system it can also carry out point to point operations. So, C is also not correct. Cutter diameter compensation is not required, this is correct. So, D is the correct answer. Cutter radius compensation in CNC two dimensional milling with n milling cutter. So, cutter radius compensation is you know it means the same thing as cutter diameter compensation for all uh, you know practical purposes in this question cutter radius compensation in CNC two dimensional milling with n milling cutter that means maybe you are cutting all around a particular contour in uh, two dimensions. So, it, it is used to determine radial run out of cutters determine the cutter rpm find cutter center lo locus from workpiece geometry and cutter diameter none of the others. Here the third number C is correct because if you are cutting all around a particular contour in 3 D in two dimensions what happens is that the cutter center moves around in a particular locus and it is difficult to determine this cutter center locus without applying you know a number of uh, equations I mean number of uh, coordinate geometry formulae and equations. So, instead of that we can uh, we can intimate to the computer about the geometry of the workpiece and the cutter diameter and that way the computer can find out for us the cutter locus cutter center locus. The cutter is not a point object, but it has a finite diameter. So, that makes the center line locus move away from the work piece contour. So, C is correct. A CNC milling machine is having maximum y x travel to be 100 millimeters if the basic length unit along x axis is 0 0.001 millimeters the least size of the x dda. So, we are talking about the linear interpolator here or for that matter hardware interpolator and uh, this uh, we are referring to the x digital differential analyzer in that interpolator. So, if the maximum x travel be 100 millimeters 
then the base and the basic length unit be 0 0.001 millimeters. In that case, the least size of the XDDA would be 20 bits, none of the others, 10 bits, 16 bits. Here, I leave the problem to you. You have to choose first, of, you have to find out first of all what should be the maximum number which has to be accommodated inside the XDDA. How can we find it out? The travel that the CNC ma machine might have to carry out along X might well be the maximum possible one which is coming out from these figures. 100 millimeters divided by the basic, basic length unit gives us the total number of basic length units which are contained in the maximum possible travel. So, 1000 sorry 1000 millimeters I was uh, mistakenly referring to it as 100, 1000 millimeters divided by 0 0.001 that means 10 to the power 6 basic length units. So, we have to find out the size of the XDDA which would be able to accommodate 10 to the power 6. For example, if you have 16 bits, the size of the DDA will be the maximum uh, number which can be accommodated is 2 to the power 16 minus 1. So, what you have to do is open your calculators, find out you have to find out 2 to the power 20 minus 1, 2 to the power 16 minus 1, 2 to the power 10 minus 1 and find out the 1 which is the smallest uh, number which can accommodate 10 to the power 6. So, I leave this to you, I am sure that you will be able to solve it. For execution of line number 2, the ratio of V x by V y is, so this is again from interpolators. So, we have line number 1 G 90, G 90 means that we are having uh, absolute motion. So, G 90, G 0 0, x 0 0 0.55 and y 20 comma 3 0. Line number 2 reads G 0 1 that means, we are now moving in a linear uh, with linear interpolation x 12.55. So, as we are having absolute motion the incremental motion from line number 1 to line number I mean line number against line number 2 the incremental motion along x is 12 millimeters and the incremental motion along y is 5 millimeters. So, 12 millimeters along x 5 millimeters along y and feed is 200. So, feed should be divided sorry the ratio of V x by V y is required. Ratio V x by V y will be as delta x divided by delta y which means 12 by 5. So, the first option is correct. A digital differential analyzer is to emit 3000 pulses per minute. If the input pulse frequency f is 6000 pulses per minute, so f is 6000 and n is 4 bits, the content inside the DDA which gets added repeatedly is so, this is not MCQ, but you have to write down uh, the answer here in a uh, you know a, a place will be provided to write the answer. So, what is this value? So, we can quickly calculate it. If 600 is, the is if f is 600 and n equal to 4 and say the content x inside is simply x, then we have 6000 into x divided by 2 to the power 4 which means 16 is equal to 3000. So, 6000 and 3000 will cancel and leave behind 2. So,
So, 2 x divided by 2 to the power 16 equal to 1. That means, x is equal to 2 to the power 4 divided by 2, which means 2 to the power 3 equal to 8. So, I repeat 6000 into x divided by 2 to the power 4 is equal to 3000. 3000 and 6000 cancel leaving behind 2 x divided by 2 to the power 4 equal to 1. Therefore, x is equal to 2 to the power 4 divided by 2 equal to 8. So, the correct answer is x is equal to 8. Mirror imaging in a CNC program cannot be performed in point to point machines, cannot be performed in case of continuous control machines, can be performed in both the above types of machines, cannot be performed in both. So, D is obviously wrong if it cannot be performed in both it would not have existed and A and B they are also wrong. Mirror imaging can be carried out both in point to point as well as continuous control machines. So, option C is correct. <coughs> For the following part with the direction of motion shown we would use cutter radius compensation left and cutter compensation cutter radius compensation right which one would be the one that we are using. So, the cutter is shown as the small circle here the cutter is seen from the top it is a it is say a uh, simply a milling cutter moving like this rotating and moving like this all around. So, the direction is of motion is rightwards and looking in the direction of motion if we find the cutter has to be shifted towards the right side from the path uh, for from the workpiece contour. So, this is the work workpiece contour and if we have to shift the cutter to the right hand side looking in the direction of cut then it is right tool compensation. So, B is correct cutter compensation right has to be used here which is G 42 B is correct. So, one GTL example if L 1 and C 1 are already defined let us see which one is L 1 L 1 is this line directed towards this direction and C 1 is this circle with a clockwise sense of rotation. These uh, directions of uh, rotation of sense these are incorporated in the very uh, definition of these lines and circles. The definition of the small circle C 2 with radius 10 millimeters would be in G T L C 2 is equal to L 1 C 1 R minus 10 etcetera etcetera some options are provided. Let us see which one can be can be the correct one. Let us see the first one driving along L 1 you want to shift your car to the lane C 1. So, you are driving along L 1 you are starting from here you are moving this way you take this particular shortcut okay, and this deviation I mean this diversion leads you to this particular route. Okay. You might say why do not I move simply this way and then this way no this is not allowed you have to you know use this as a shortcut where you always maintain the correct direction along you know smooth lines. So, if you move this way you are moving this way and ultimately you are ending up in the opposite direction of C C 1 that is not allowed because you are supposed to end up along C 1 direction only you are ending up in opposite C 1. So, the first one definitely cannot be correct and in fact since it is r minus 10 this would have defined had it been correct then also it would have defined 
uh, 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 circle with you know clockwise sense and this is obviously counterclockwise. So, this is definitely it would have been wrong anyway. Second one, second one reads driving along C 1 you are ending up. So, you are driving along C 1 that is good and you are ending up by take, taking this particular diversion you are ending up in the minus L 1 direction mind you. Okay, it's 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 minus L one direction. That's good, and R ten. That mean that means counterclockwise circle. This is also counterclockwise circle. But mind you, this particular definition won't be allowed since it is taking the major arc along C two. Once everything is correct, you have to further check whether a major arc or minor arc is involved in the definition third definition. So, second definition is not allowed major arc C 2 C 2 is equal to minus L 1. So, you are coming this way you are coming this way minus L 1 and you are ending up in the oh sorry this is a misprint please uh, uh, please note this should be C 1 this should be C 1 in the third definition minus L 1 you are driving this way and you end up ending up in C 1 direction. So, this is C 1 direction everything is correct in this particular definition and the and the diversion that you are taking that is counterclockwise as well. So, C is correct C is correct. Okay. So, uh, this brings us to the end of the uh, 15th lecture thank you very much.